Hey guys, this is One Week with the Fuji X100V. This little camera has so much hype surrounding it, and I gotta tell you, it's easy to see why. The Fuji X100V is a really amazing digital camera that offers such cool features. The main one that everyone's talking about though is how good the film simulations are. And what is a film simulation? A film simulation is simply where Fuji allows you to choose from a bunch of presets that mimic the look of film. So when you're shooting with this camera, it's very easy to get pictures that right out of the camera look like they were taken with the film camera, but have that extra sharpness and crispness that I personally love. I've only been using this camera for about a week now, and I'm gonna show you some of the results that I've gotten with it, just testing it out. But I'm amazed, I'm truly blown away with this camera, and I understand why it's so hard to get. This is a camera that if you're able to get a hold of one, Congratulations, I had to search forever and ended up paying well over retail to try and get one of these. But if you're able to do that, if you're able to get one, I highly recommend getting it because to me, this is like a, a major competitor to something like the Leica Q2. The reason I say that is because I think they're about the same size. They get compared so often in videos and, and online for their features and the look of the photos. And I, I really honestly, have found that I prefer shooting in black and white on this camera versus shooting in color, which is really weird for me because most of the time I shoot color. I do love black and white. And in fact, I shoot a lot of black and white film, but with digital cameras, I don't, I, I very rarely shoot in black and white. And with this one, it's like, that's all I wanna shoot in is black and white. I love how the photos look. You're getting so much detail and so much depth with each of these photos that it's hard to believe it's not like tiny and it does weigh a pretty good amount. Like it's pretty substantial. You're gonna notice this thing hanging around your neck on a uh, camera strap here if you're carrying it around for a couple hours. It's not so heavy that it's going to be a problem. In fact, I actually have a lot of cameras that are much heavier. My Sony a7 III. Talk about something that's heavy and weighs you down after a while, especially if you've got a really big lens on it. Uh, so this thing's not bad, but it does have a little bit of a heft to it. I personally think that that makes it feel substantial and high quality, and I also love the look of it. I had a, a really weird time getting this color, the silver. I had originally ordered the silver, and then the seller contacted me and said, all we have in stock is the black. Is that okay? And I was kind of upset because I had already paid well over retail, like I said, because it's nearly impossible to get one of these. I told them at first, I was like, just cancel the order, you know, for that price to not even get the color I ordered, not too happy with that. And then I thought about it for like two seconds, and I was like, I shouldn't have said that because now I'm not ever gonna be able to find one of these or it's gonna be a really long time, like months and months before these things are back in stock due to supply chain issues and things like that. I went ahead and messaged them almost immediately back and I said, go ahead and send it. I'm not super happy about the fact that it's not what I ordered, but go ahead and send it. I had ordered all of the accessories, like the lens hood, the soft shutter button, all of my accessories in black because I thought, you know what? The camera's coming in black and I don't care. I'm just excited about it at this point. The camera arrives and the box says silver. And I'm thinking if they sent me a black camera in a box that says silver, that's just weird. So I open it up and setting right there is the silver. So I don't know. At this point, I would have just been happy to own either the black or the silver. The black actually looks pretty awesome too. That's the thing about the Fuji X100V. There is no bad option. There's The silver looks great, the black looks great. At the end of the day, it's what's inside of this camera, the technology that's built in and the film simulations that look so good that really matter. I think it might actually be the perfect travel camera if you're wanting to take one camera with you. It does do video. Didn't buy it for that because I know that the videos the, the IBS, the inbuilt stabilization is supposed to be terrible because there is none. The footage that comes out of this, crystal clear footage, terrible stabilization. So, I mean, if you've got a tripod and you wanna do most of your video like that, should not be a problem. But if you're wanting to take this and do travel video, you may wanna look for a different camera. But if you're wanting to do travel photography, you can't do much better for the price. Even though I overpaid for this by a, a good amount, I still feel like it, I got a good deal because this camera to me is comparable to like $5,000 to $6,000 Leica Q2. And I'm not saying that's a bad camera. I hear amazing things about it, but the Leica Q2 is out of my budget. And this is something that I think most people, if you really, really wanna go for it, 
uh, can manage. Even if you have to do like small payments and things, it's not a super expensive camera when you're looking at like the Sony a7 III and the Leica Q2. And I know they're different cameras. They do completely different things, but you wanna check this out. Now let's look at some photos that I got with this. I'm gonna show you the, the color and the black and white on a couple of these just to show you the difference. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you love photography and cameras and all that cool stuff because you're definitely welcome here. And I'll see you guys later.